but what we uh, see in this case is that she has a little bit of congestion in her left maxillary sinus. Maybe she had a cold. She does have a narrow palate. Uh, this patient was actually brought up to me by Dr. Nora, who had seen the patient for evaluation and uh, noticed these very, 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 very large tonsils. So you can see that in this case, the tonsils are, you know, occupying uh, about, you know, 95% of the um, you know, throat volume. In an ideal circumstance, uh, the throat would be open from here to here, but this poor little girl was struggling to breathe. We were able to get her to the OR within a week, and you can also see here that uh, she really has no nasal um, airway. The, this is our severe adenoid hypertrophy. There's really no airway here consequent to that. Her head is coming forward, her tongue is going down, she's developing a high arch palate, and so really being able to, uh, you know, address this in multiple modalities is extremely helpful. All right, everyone, we are in the middle of a tonsillectomy here. Poor little girl has these huge, huge tonsils, can't even breathe, and I thought I'd give you a little insight into how the surgery is done. We are here under anesthesia, and what we're doing is we're carefully peeling away the tonsil tissue from the uh, lateral wall here. And uh, we'll show you what it looks like in a minute once the tonsils are out. It's called coblation. The radio frequency energy heats up the water and the water gently ablates the tissue, sealing off the critical blood vessels. In doing this procedure, it's really important to stay inside uh, the plane of fascia tissue to avoid injury to underlying muscle, and you also want to avoid getting into the tonsil. This is going to make the tonsil come out really nice and smoothly without any bleeding or injury. So here we are with the tonsillectomy. You can see this is grade four tonsils touching all the way. We're almost ready to remove them. So here we go, the last little stump of tissue. Yeah, we had an excellent dissection. You can see uh, that it requires a good amount of experience to get the tonsil out without injuring the surrounding tissue. And here it is, okay. Tonsil coming out, and then we'll take a look in here. Take a look at the airway. Really good, nicely open. We leave a little bit of tonsil tissue behind for residual immune function. You can see we did a really, really nice job of minimal bleeding and good preservation of the underlying anatomy. Now on to the opposite side. Here we are exposing the opposite side, all right? And um, we're gonna, again, use the coblation technology to, you know, gently feed up the tissue. Before I do this, I make sure to anesthetize the area. Uh, the coblation technology uh, is a lot less painful to recover from. So I encourage you guys to ask your providers if they use coblation and uh, to make sure they have a good amount of experience with um, large tonsils in uh, young children because there's some small nuances that can actually make a big difference. So here is the right side. We opened uh, the tonsil, gently separated it, and it's out. That's our tonsillectomy. Okay. Very minimal to no bleeding. We use the coblation to seal up any additional blood vessels. Looking really, really good. And now we will go to the adenoids. So we're going to take a look at the adenoids now that they're out. All right. So we're taking a look in our little mirror here. And we're seeing that we're able to see all the way up to the coena, which is the back of the nose area. And the adenoids looking a lot better there. And we've done our tonsillectomy. I just want to also point out that we have a little bit of lingual tonsil tissue on the side here. Um, and so this, this tissue will continue to provide good immune support, even though we removed a lot of the tonsils. Uh, there's still some lymphoid tissue there uh, to do the important immune function that it does. So that's our case here. Um, we're going to go ahead and remove these red robins. Give me the suction catheter. And you're going to see what a different situation we have. Again, little to no bleeding with a really good meticulous technique. These cases 
can be complicated, um, but you know, an experienced hand should go really, really well. And this child's gonna do great with her new airway. Another nice little touch I like to do is put a couple sutures to lift the soft palate. You can see by lifting the soft palate, we're really gonna be able to open up that posterior airway space. It'll also uh, shorten the recovery period. Not a lot of doctors use sutures, but I do like to do this move. You can see that as we lift the soft palate up, we're opening up that airway, making it easier for this little girl to breathe. We'll show you the final result in just a minute. All right, so we put a couple of sutures in there and uh, you can see that it really helped to lift up this uh, posterior airway space. So when she breathes through her nose, it'll be a lot less resistance. The adenoids have been uh, reduced, the tonsils have been removed, the airway's nice and open, symmetric, minimal bleeding. We left a little bit of lingual tonsil tissue here for residual immune function. And we are so excited for her. She's now one week post-op and take a look at her airway, totally wide, open, breathing so, so, so much better. Now, pre-operatively, she also had these very large adenoids blocking her nose. And now you can see that she can actually start to breathe through her nose. She is just one week post-op and doing so, so, so well. Congratulations. How are you feeling afterwards? Uh, I can breathe through my nose now. You can breathe through your nose now. And I think I can breathe better. Amazing. Amazing. You're just one week out. Congratulations, sweetheart. Amazing.